Good afternoon. I'm Sharice Gillette, president of Lexington Theological Seminary. The mission of Lexington Theological Seminary is to prepare faithful leaders for the Church of Jesus Christ and thus to strengthen the church's participation in God's mission for the world. Our strategic imperatives are diversity, equity, and inclusion, academic excellence and relevancy, sustaining pastors in ministry, financial stability and growth, continuous cultivation of a high quality environment to work, study, and grow. Our core values, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Celebrating diversity and supporting differences with the intention of building a more inclusive, equitable, and just community. Honoring historically underrepresented communities. Relationship to the church. Continue to imagine and craft a model of theological education in collaboration with the church, supporting the involving needs of a diverse and ever-changing world. Support of students. Continue partnering in the formation of individuals for ministry by attending to the practical, intellectual, and spiritual needs of students. Honoring their calls to ministry, pastoral, church-related, and as community leaders. Commitment to congregational ministry. Maintaining a focus on congregational ministry, including bivocational ministry, centering the curriculum on hands-on experiences, on the skills and attitudes required for faithful leadership in an increasingly diverse and globalized world. Research and scholarship. Continue providing time, encouragement, and resources for faculty in conducting scholarly research that is attentive to an array of perspectives in their chosen disciplines. Publishing and distributing materials in written and or digital formats for the use in the academy and in congregational ministry. Sound business practices. Employ the best practices for management and shared governance of the institution, valuing and upholding our theological commitments to stewardship and strategic growth. Our financial update. Ministerial Education Fund is at the heart of what we do here to support scholarships and tuition discounts to our students. Through the generosity of our donors, they give in a variety of ways. So this year, the goal of the Ministerial Education Fund was $450,000, and we're at 85% of that goal. We need your support to get there. Two events have been in the public consciousness and have shaped our lives, or at least my life, for the past 14 months. COVID-19 and the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. 14 months ago, none of us, none of us could have fully anticipated the dramatic impacts of the novel coronavirus. Today, the economic, social, spiritual, political, and personal impacts of the virus are known in the businesses that have closed their doors and the loss of income for others, in the isolation felt by many and the mental health toll taken on others, in the polarization of our basic public health care, and in the loss of lives, friendships, and connections. Returning to some kind of normal activity, although very much desired, is still full of uncertainty. What we know today about keeping ourselves and others safe and healthy has been enriched, but it is also very much a function of the basics. Wash your hands, wear a mask, observe social distancing, stay at home if sick or ill, clean exposed surfaces often, and more recently, if available, take the vaccine. As pastors and church leaders, I know you are trying to find a way to reintegrate as a church family. My recommendation is to go slowly, enjoy their reunions, but allow for the possibility, indeed the probability, that everyone is not ready to worship and praise God in a public setting. Not everyone is ready for hugs. Not everyone is ready for a fully assembled choir singing with gusto, and I like to sing. And not everyone is ready for full occupancy on their favorite church pew. Your colleague, Sarah Fisher, has some interesting thoughts on this issue from her context as a pastor and a member of a military family. 
I hope you find time to read field notes posted on the LTS website. I think you'll find them helpful. Friends, God's grace has helped us navigate a global pandemic faithfully. That same grace will help us return to our congregations. God's grace will help us reckon with COVID-19, which presented a global challenge. If COVID-19 presented a global health challenge, then finding ways to reckon with a past on issues of race and justice presented a familiar one. Reckoning with our history highlights our lack of agreement on that history and its meaning. There are visible artifacts of that history in laws, statues, flags, literature, and hurtful memories and language that live on as testaments to an unacknowledged pain of such history. The deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor sparked mass protests and calls for change in policing strategies and practices nationwide. And it was a clear-eyed declaration that these individuals were dead because their lives as African Americans were deemed less valuable. A year later, we can take a little, and I do mean a little, comfort in the conviction of the police officer that killed George Floyd and in the passage of the Breonna Taylor Law. We can take some comfort, just a little, in the recognition that the massacre of black citizens in Tulsa, Oklahoma is being acknowledged 100 years later, and that meaningful dialogue about accountability and restitution are in the open. These actions, all of them, are measures of our progress. These actions, all of them, are now a part of our history. A history, I pray, we as people of faith can reckon with in a faithful and honest manner as we learn to embody the love and justice of a living God. We must learn to embody the gospel we profess to love. We must learn to honor and embrace the gift of God's diversity in God's kingdom. That is our challenge. That is our challenge, to embody the gospel, the diversity of God's kingdom in ways that say, we love you. A word of celebration, my friends. I want to celebrate the 13 students who received certificates from the Hispanic Ministries program on June 7th, and the 19 students who on June 17th received certificates in pastoral ministry, a Master's of Theological Study, Master of Divinity, Certificate of Congregation of Renewal and Leadership, or Doctor of Ministry degree. Congratulations to all of them and their families. They and you are evidence of God's grace. For me, they and you are evidence of God's first fruits stemming from an unprecedented time in our shared history. Ruben Alves is a 20th century Brazilian philosopher. He talks of first fruits of God's future. First fruits of God's future. You know, O oh God, how hard it is to survive captivity without any hope of the holy city. Sing to us, God, the songs of the promised land. Serve us your manna in the desert and give us grace to enjoy our day of rest as an expression of our trust. Let there be in some place a community of men, women, elderly, children, and newborn babies as a first fruit, as an appetizer, as an embrace of the future. Friends, let us go into the future looking for the first fruits of God's blessing. To God be the glory.